a good evening everybody and a big crowd in here at the national capital to see the battle that many people believe is a dress rehearsal for the grand final competition leaders the bulldogs of canterbury many changes they've switched players around wilson comes in for dallas williams to the wing mccracken in for hughes polymer out at the half lamb to five eight dimmick to lock jason smith to the second row and dean pay to the bench and the raiders as peter pointed out looking for 20 wins in a row at bruce stadium and not beaten since the opening round of 1993 on their own soil unchanged from last weekend and what a brilliant performance it was inspired by that man ricky stewart and of course brett mullins reaping the rewards of the overall performance canberra then running from left to right greg mccallum is the referee and of course canberra dearly would love uh, would, would like to get into that top three it might not be this match that is the crunch but in fact it could be that match against manly down the track the first return of the football and dimmick wears the the lock forward jumper tonight ben gilly is a dummy half using martin bella he came off a short run as they so often do from back on their own line and now darren britt is taken by a strong canberra tackle led by steve walters and it goes across now for darren smith to unload and halligan close to that sideline is pummeled by the canberra defense 25 out from their own line so canterbury meeting the full wrath of uh, the canberra defense in the opening set of six and now the clear and terry lamb he gets it down to bounce on the 30 meter line and back inside the 20 it bounces the name on everybody's lips brett mullins comes out noah now Mandruku. canberra with their first touch of the football croker plays it equal leading try scorer meninga uses hetherington and they're just beyond the 40 meter line Lomax wrapped up by Jason Smith he's discounted that headgear now it seems permanently as Stewart keeps it low punches it into the corner and from the in goal Scott Wilson goes back the chase was good the tackle made by Fulavai Canterbury back on their own line with Darren Smith going in from the centres to do work that he's accustomed to in the forwards He's only had one touch of the football, Brett Mullins, but a sense of excitement in the crowd whenever he's near the football. The fact that McCracken has got a little bit of an injury problem, I think that Canberra will aim some attack there, and if he has got a problem with the, the ankle, the speed of the outside men for the Raiders will find it out. Interesting to note, Peter, Jared McCracken, usually a right centre, was playing on the left tonight in the early stages of the game. Could be two reasons for that. One to Mark Mel Meninga, but two, I think they would realise Canterbury that uh, Canberra could target him in defence and just want to put them in two minds in the opening part of the game. Brett Mullins then comes back with his second touch of the football. He signed up to stay with the Raiders for the turn of the century. And the first penalty of the game sees a Canterbury player down injured. I think it's Ben Gillies who stayed down. And he's in Disneyland at the moment. Got a little bit of blood up around the the forward area as well you see there you got, got the kick and will result in the blood bin Dean Pay of course on the bench for Canterbury a bad player to bring on he may get into this action a little bit earlier than expected as Lomax takes the defence on just on the halfway mark an awesome record faces the visiting sides here to Bruce Stadium since 1990 they've played 53 games and Canberra have won 43 of them and those kind of statistics are not to be taken lightly there's the head-to-head -head, very much Canterbury's way since 1982 but not so at Bruce Stadium a bit of a jostle up in back play as Canberra go on with the football 30 meters out from the Canterbury line away goes Walters from dummy half and a good run now they're 18 metres out from the line. Stewart is calling it. He's pointing to the air. And here he is, putting it up now. High and plenty of time for the runners. Wilson gets underneath it. Did he get a shot at the ball? Canberra come down with it. And that is a turnover. 
Well, plenty of pressure out there. The bomb finally diffused. I can't understand why the Bulldogs did not have a player out there for Ben Gillies when he left the field. Hetherington will come on now in 22. There you see how close it was. Bradley Clyde coming up with the football. But they went three and four tackles with only a 12-line defence and they were busted twice. The penalties are levelled up. Does Canterbury get one back on their own 20-metre line against the defence for holding down in the tackle. And McCallum pinches Ricky Stewart. What's the story with Ben Gilly, Steve? Yeah, he had a bit of a cut around the mouth, got a, got a kick uh, from Mullins, but uh, Heverington, Jason Heverington, maybe he's returned to uh, reserve grade today. He's on the field for Canterbury Banks now. All right, so Jason's out there in jumper 22. He goes dummy half for Martin Bella. The push is on for Polamata and the run around with his captain. Then for Wilson, now for Smith. They go to the halfway line and they're put down the doggies. The ball comes out. This will be a penalty. Waked out. Canterbury taking a, uh, a leap out of last week's game against Newcastle, finding plenty of space out on the edges of Canberra's uh, condensed defence. I think you'll see Canterbury move the ball uh, wide early, a hell of a lot more than they're used to. Well, Phil Levi thinks that he was the man penalised, but in fact it was Bradley Clyde coming in late in the tackle. Bella was wrapped up. They're 38 out from the line. They're on the hillside of Bruce Stadium. Darren Britt. And now from Hetherington, Lamb goes from the open, runs the blind, uses Dimmick, and Jason Smith turns it back. Dimmick trails through, and they're 10 metres out from the line. And the Bulldogs looking good. They come wide through Lamb, the runaround, the dummy from Polamata, the infielder to Britt, and then for Dimmick, and Dimmick is put away. Five metres out from the line. Canberra now tested, away from dummy half, through the number seven, on to Lamb, the grubber kick, and the chase, and Mandruku. Takes it over the dead ball line. A perfect finish, apart from a try, to a very good set of six. The support play of Canterbury, outstanding. You can't score the try, you want the football back. And the kick forced Nandruku to play at it. Tremendous atmosphere at Bruce Stadium as Bella is put away. Darren Britt. Hetherington, you could hear the ground effects microphone, the encouraging words, good hit. And now on the 40-metre line, Polamounta finds his captain, Terry Lamb. Infielder for McCracken, he's gone without it. And it's away from Ferner. Put away now on the ground there is uh, Quentin Pongier, I do believe. In fact, that's Jason Croker. It comes away for Rick Stewart. Stewart to the halfway line. No score as Mullins unloads. Lomax goes ahead, gets rid of one would-be tackle, that of Darren Britt. And look at the strength of the Kiwi. 35 out now from the Canterbury line. Walters the dummy half. Stewart the receiver. Offers it on the inside for Croker. Goes out for Clyde. Then they find Ricky. And a grassing tackle out there by Darren Smith. One of the best defence centres in the game. Now Clyde offers it out the back. Walters shovels it on. Ricky looks for a space. And they're 30 metres out as it goes back for Stewart. Stewart! Oh! Stewart taken high Jason by Smith. Jason Smith. Callum calls him out. Terry Lamb appealing that he hit him under the arm. Terry, um, Rick Stewart to his feet quickly. And Jason Smith called over. Well, that's the third time that players have gone high on Canberra players. The first one on Clyde, the second on Brett Mullins. The first two were ruled to be around the chest. That one was around the neck. And I hope that we've got 26 players left out there shortly. We are going to, McCallum rules that the penalty will be sufficient. Centre field 29 metres out. A little bit lucky, Jason Smith. Value right in front then, 30 metres out. Value of a good captain there, Peter. As soon as that incident took place, Terry Lamb rang to the referee and started talking. I don't know whether he's done the job to keep him on the field, but he certainly gave Greg McCallum plenty of time to have a think about what sort of action he could take. In the end, he's put him on report, I would say, by bringing the touch judge in and the two captains. Terry Lamb still up talking to the referee now. He'd like to settle this down now and have Greg McCullum remove that incident from his thinking for the rest of the game. Rick Stewart to be admired as well. He could have probably feigned a more serious injury. He got up very quickly. David Ferner there. He had the perfect record from last Friday night, if memory serves me correctly. This one keeps it intact. 
straight over the dot. The Raiders fans love it. 2-0, 13 gone, the Raiders against the Doggies. Welcome back in Bruce Stadium, the national capital, home of the Canberra Raiders, the Green Machine and all of that. And are we watching the dress rehearsal for the grand final? Meninga plays it on the 20-metre line. Forwards, they line up. And here's another high tackle. It's the same man, Jason Smith, and this time things could well have escalated very quickly. Jason Smith is in the dock again. A real test for Greg McCallum's patience. I think we've still got 26. We have. But for the rest of the game, Jason Smith has got to be around the, the boot laces. Next time he's gone, and you can see there straight away, I think it's Quentin Pongia. He reacted to the tackle. And they find touch 32 metres out, so... A little bit of possession going Canberra's way in the last couple of minutes. Lomax there. 40 metres out from his own line. Across for Rick Stewart. And now Quentin Pongia, who was involved in that high shot, shovels it back for David Ferner. Taken by McCracken. Jason Croker is wrapped up by Jason Williams and Jim Dimmick. There's plenty of everything on offer when you want it. There's plenty of attackers, plenty of defenders. That means it's cancelling one another out. Away from dummy half goes Walters. He went to sleep at marker there, a little bit, a little bit slow getting up. And away comes Stewart. Then he finds Meninga. He tries to trample over Williams. Nandruku doesn't remain alert. And this will be a Canterbury feed. For Steve Walters, the best hooker forward I've seen. Just a, another great display from him, even early in this game. Knows when to run. Nandruku couldn't come up with the catch a little bit behind him. Bella gets over the top there, but Steve Wilder is so dangerous when the markers are either a little bit lazy or late getting there. No one penalises you worse. Canterbury and wide, picking up their fullback here. Put away enthusiastically by Ruben Wickey, and now Lamb comes out from dummy half, and Wickey makes the tackle. And that's two for Wickey. Back to back tackles, and now it's Darren Britt standing and pushing the pass back, and Paula Mounta. Colomar is taken by Meninga. Almost to the halfway line, Canterbury with Dimmick now. Showing it to Simon Gillies, and then he's wrapped up and put down by Lomax, but it's a penalty to Canterbury. But I think this tackle has been high as well. Well, Greg McCallum is having, for a referee, I suppose, an horrific night. I Probably, I think we've got to say that, thank goodness, one of the senior referees has got this match. Take a comment from Steve as Canterbury prepare to kick for goal from 40 metres out, 12 metres in from touch. And it's a fairly tough assignment, but I wonder, is it for Daryl Halligan, Steve Roach? No, I don't think for, so for Daryl. I think uh, he's a very safe goalkeeper. But that one, for mine, well, wasn't a swinging arm. No way. He had a second go. He just tried to backslam him. I don't think it was. I think McCallum's uh, getting caught up into the, into the fever of things. Yeah, well, the replay, Steve, substantiates what you say, but, of course, the, the tackle was high. And I guess that's all he all he has to do is enforce the rule book. Is there any wind down there, Block? Is it with the against or very no, still? No, no, it's very, very still. 83%. Leading point scorer last year. And the same applies this year. What a magnificent purchase he's been. There it goes. Flags go up. Brett Mullins didn't have to move. He was the man to watch. So we're level. Two points all after 18 minutes, Friday night rugby league. Welcome back. Canberra restarting following the, the equaliser from Daryl Halligan. Bella was able to get through, aided and abetted by David Furner slipping over. 
just outside the 20 meter line jim dimmick was there they got a quick play of the ball but the defense was equal to it they came up just as quickly hardly got across the advantage line darren Britt now 30 meters out the ball is loose still no ben gillies back in the in the game apparently he's being stitched up as jason hetherington goes into dummy half and simon gillies is the forward that takes it up Three Canberra Raiders involved in the tackle. Walters was one. Pongi or another. Lomax the other. Lamb puts in the kick and he keeps it deep. But the bounce is unfavourable for Canterbury. Good for Canberra. Brett Mullins comes back and Lamb puts all his team on side by going straight down the ground and then gets involved in the tackle. That's the 30 metre line just behind them as it goes across for Stewart. He holds it back as the uh, Canterbury defence came up umbrella. And that shuts Stewart down. Now, Ferner. Center of the ground, Stewart across for Hetherington. Turned inside by Pongi. It was a loose pass, and eventually it was scooped up. And Canberra holding possession through Jason Croker. Six more tackles, says McCallum. Canterbury got a touch. Bradley Clyde. For a thundering run up to the 40 meter line away from dummy half walters he's keen to run stewart away this is david ferner he gets out of the tackle and he's pulled down by a desperate diving tackle from jason smith 30 meters out the raiders starting to boil stewart looks inside dummies to pongia goes out for croker and then oh great hands great skills by bradley clyde there was a set move sending meninga wide trying to bring clyde up the middle and put the defence into two minds, but the pass was a poor one. This is the last tackle now. It'll go to Stewart to the left. Stewart to the air. Again, look at the height of it. Down it comes in the air. Oh, from nowhere! From nowhere, Brett Mullins! And he's given the try! Oh, this is sensational stuff! He's hurt himself in the tackle, or as he dived in for the try. 6 to the Raiders. Have a look at it. Well, he was never going to not score this try, and the kick was the important one because Scott Wilson was heading to the other side. Had no time to come back. Well, what about that? What can you say? It's just you expect it now from Brett Mullins in the form he's in. The kick has actually come back to the right, and that put the Canterbury defence out. They thought he was going to the left side of the field. Mullins knew different. 18 tries, and the leading try scorer now is Brett Mullins. His dad's in the crowd. Yes, he gets across for all the home games as David Ferner. Oh, he's hitting it. He's hitting it like a like a sterling nine iron. Great accuracy, eight two, and there he is, Bill Mullins, the dad of Brett and a former champion winger with Eastern Suburbs and played for Australia, of course. So the scrum 40 metres out from the Canterbury line and Albert Thulevai goes almost all the way. 15 metres out from the line, Canberra now. They come to the right with Stewart, pushes it on for Ruben Wickey. Williams comes off his wing, there's space out on the right. And, Thule, and Wickey there's tackle, three metres out. The dummy half is Jason Croker. Croker with a long ball. Stewart is going to put the long pass on. Lomax short pass. Mullins away. Heswington on. Full of bow for the corner. Great defence by the Bulldogs. Oh, great defence. Craig Polamantle, Terry Lamb was there. Scott Wilson. I've got no doubt the referee was going to an award a penalty with Jason Williams completely offside over this side of the field. But two rucks later, Canberra could have scored. It was good refereeing. Played advantage. Hetherington knew that he had a quicker man on the outside in Fool of I, but Polamounder and Lamb combined. They've covered plenty of territory to get over there. Line drop out then to recommence. The scoreboard shows Canberra 8, Canterbury 2. So they come out from the line with the Bulldogs. Their drop kick, 45 metres on the fly, and Mullins... Sends Hetherington back. Feel you surprised Dean Pay hasn't come into the game as yet. I get the impression that a little bit of the sting's been taken out of this Canterbury team. I'm very surprised he's not in the starting line. I'm not trying to second guess the coach or the tactics in the game, but uh, he's such a great player and so experienced that 
I'd have had him there at the start of the game. You can see that Canberra are definitely starting to get an edge on Canterbury, and they need someone whose experience is pay on the field. Played by Mullins then, swept away from dummy half from Nandruku, through Stewart and on to Clyde. Clyde steps around and almost gets through, gets a pass back, but it's gone to ground. Hey, Ricky Stewart, you can see the disappointment and the frustration there. He knew that they were very close to getting their second try. Bradley Clyde inside Simon Gillies. The pass there, a good tackle coming from behind from Jim Dimmick, hit him on his blind side. And they really need to string together some sets of six now, Canterbury. They've been under all sorts of pressure for ten minutes. Darren Smith then comes away from his own ten-metre line from the set scrum. A comment on the sideline with Steve Roach. Yes, the mistake Canterbury are making at the moment is Jared McCracken and Jason Williams coming in off their, off their positions all the time, which allows Mel to stand in, uh, stand in tackles and offload the Mullins. Darren Britt now. Pushes the attack forward for Canterbury as they bring it away from the danger zone. Ben Gillies with the headgear on now. So three of the Bulldogs in headgear. Simon and Ben Gillies and uh, Darren Smith. And the kick back to Brett Mullins. You can sense the crowd when Rugby League heralds a new hero. There's not that many of them around, but... You can sense that when Mullins touches it, the crowd just automatically rises. You can also sense that the Bulldogs knew how important it was to keep one straight line. Doesn't matter how quickly you come up on the kick, as long as you come up together. Newcastle didn't do that last week. Play by Clyde, given by Walters. Stewart looks inside, goes out for Lomax, looks for a runner. There's David Ferner, gets a pass away, full of by. He goes for the corner and he gets it down for the second try. Canberra, the Raiders. They lead 12 points to two now. A great combination of game from the big Canberra forwards, combining with their back line. I think Scott Wilson makes a mistake here with Terry Lamb. They get mixed up. The inside pass here with the dummy opens something up on the outside for Lomax. He finds Ferner, who's a great support player, pushes out a bridge tackle. Now let's have a look for Scott Wilson. He frees it there. Scott Wilson was actually coming in to take this man, but Terry Lamb was always never going to have the pace with Bullaby on his outside. Scott Wilson had to be the man to stay out and leave the inside runner for his 5'8". Try again then. Let's just have a look and see if, if this picks it up. Great work from Ferner, keeping the ball alive. Bullaby has really got a free run to the line, and, and there were two Canterbury players there. Terry Lamb didn't have the speed to get there. I think Wilson would have. Very big crowd in it, Bruce. With David Ferner. This time just offline. The first one I think he's missed in something like 12 shots, if you include last weekend at Marathon. 12-2, the Raiders over the Bulldogs. The Raiders taking the tap with Steve Walters. Sending Lomax into the defence. And I just take my eyes away to the stats. 11 tackles and 9 hit-ups. Lomax. Tommy are actually heads the hit-ups with 3 more than Lomax. So they're getting great value out of them as Stewart cuts out Lomax. Then Meninga a catch and pass. And Mullins did very well. Mandruku wrapped up on the Kraken. Beautiful pass, wasn't it? Scuffle up in back play now. Mullins... Is involved with uh, Jason Williams. Sunday's telecast match, by the way, South of Illawarra. A couple of the uh, publications, or one at least, indicates we're doing Manly Newcastle. The nine match is South of Illawarra on Sunday. Now, this is pretty much what happens. Uh, in back play, we've got a good shot of it. I still haven't seen a punch thrown. It looked like it might have been a knee there, but I don't think so. And the penalty has gone to Canberra for uh, holding the player out of the game. That's uh, the ruling that he's applied as Canberra take the tap and Lomax again. First man up looking for runners. And that's a very strong tackle, forcing him back by Broken Shear. Stewart now has Hetherington running at close quarters. Pongia chimes in. Ferner's with it again in the thick of the action. 
and he's 18 metres away from the line. Walters is the dummy half. He's done a lot of running tonight. Hetherington angles back in and then puts it out the back. Was it knocked on? It's with Walters. McCallum says no, not knocked on. Walters running, and then McCracken takes him. He gets the ball away. It came off the head of a Canterbury player. Not play that. Now it's with Meninga. This is Nandruku. Tries to put the step on. He's pulled down inches inside the field of play. Only a couple of metres out from the line. Canberra looking for another try before half time. The big pass away. Lomax shovels it on. It's gone out for Ruben Wicky, and Wicky goes in to score. Another try for Canberra. Right on half time. Tremendous hands by the Canberra back line. Ricky Stewart, plenty of vision, the big long ball, but a couple of real quick players by players standing in the back line. And Ruben Wicky, these Canberra backs must really love playing with some forwards who can unload the ball under pressure and get the ball to the outside quickly. Ricky Stewart certainly commanding Canterbury's attention tonight as a player who's got to be reckoned with during the semi finals. Long ball from Stewart. Who's that? Lomax. Quick hands again from Ferner. And Wiki on the outside. Too much pace. He's a player who loves to score tries. And the Canberra crowd, where well, they're enjoying this. Look at the length of the pass. Great hands under pressure from both forwards. And now Ruben Wiki. Places it down, and that's a big lead in coming into half time in such an important game. I said that to you last weekend, sir. You know, a lot of people tend to think that Canberra's got a soft belly in the forwards, but. Geez, I reckon they're a good pack of forwards, and here's the kick from the sideline, taking the upright as uh, we take a look at the halftime score. Canberra, three tries, magnificent tries, 16 to 2. They lead Canterbury Bankstown. Welcome back to Brew Stadium. As Halligan starts the second half of this. Tremendous clash between Canberra and Canterbury. Canberra asserting their superiority for the time being, just coming up to half time. The start is so tight, one end to the other, and then Canberra with that uh, incredible try by Mullins. And then they added two more to it, one just before half time. This is David Ferner who had a, a great first half. He's tackled on the 40 metre line. No changes to either side as Walters again goes for a dummy half scamper. He's done a lot of that tonight. Steve Roach on the sideline. Yeah, for the Raiders, uh, Tim Sheen saying it's a great opportunity for his team to uh, get a little bit of confidence for the semi finals. The thing that he did say to his side is don't get involved in the niggle. A couple of times Canterbury have tried to niggle and they've scored tries from it. So don't get involved in that. Also in the Canterbury room, too many push passes, too many errors as we all seen in the first half. And they've got to put the Raiders on the ground. Thank you, Block. I'm just looking at uh, Steve Walters. He's got a bit of trouble. He's, it could be an eye injury. He's out of the front line. He's back in a sweeping role at the moment. McCracken is tackled. After a strong run, 30 metres out from his own line, Darren Britt he runs into Walters now, together there with Quentin Pongy, as they put him away. Three tries then to Canberra, none to Canterbury. The Doggies, Premiership leaders coming into the night. Well, that's a good decision for Canterbury there. They were up to their last tackle, going to kick the football. Mal Rule to have had, had his hand in around the ball area, and I think rightly so. Another set of six here, they find touch 31 metres out, and as we said at half time, they've got to be the first team to put points on, they have to put them on early, I think. <laughs> An interesting decision coming up here as well. They've taken the quick tap. Across now for Dimmick, and Dimmick has to put himself through a gap. At the same time, looking to unload to a runner. Ten metres out from the line. Is this where Canterbury puts themselves well back in the game? Hetherington back on for uh, Ben Gillies. Back now, and across from Jason Smith. A wide ball out of the clutches of Jason Williams. And Simon Gillies could see that his wingman in Daryl Halligan was a long way on the outside. Look where Noah Nandruka is there. They wanted to get the ball, but by the time the ball was delivered, they'd been able to slide. The pass well in front. 
uh, uh, normally, and McCracken would play on the right-hand side of the field for Canterbury, and Smith on the left. And as you say, they've been very tentative, or, or certainly come up and taken some wrong options in defence. Good push. Canberra's half. Stewart feeds the scrum. It's recalled. 23 metres away from the Raiders' line. Three tries to nil in favour of them. And Phil Devine, who scored one of those tries, is tackled 30 metres out from his own line. I couldn't let me read Ray, but that ball said something to Ricky Stewart as he put it in. Meninga breaks into space. Outside him is one of the fast men, Nandruku. He doesn't go for him, he goes for Mullins. Turns it back inside. Meninga, Meninga, he scores himself. Oh, that is brilliant. Well, the captain's got a try. He had more speed around him than you'd find at the Olympic Games, and he finished up scoring it himself. Oh, and the crowd hated here too, Ray. Standing as one. Again, beautiful work from the outside men. There's McCracken flying up, getting nobody. Mal Meningi, he's got Mandruku there. He looked to be the obvious target. Comes back inside, and Brett Mullins appears from nowhere. The pass back inside. Fingertip control from the big man. Bamboozles the Canterbury defence. Jason Williams falls to the left-hand side. Scott Wilson tries to come up with a shoulder charge. That was probably never going to be that effective. Great try. What about that? What about Mel Meninga's catch at the end? Good ball to Mullins. Torpedo pass back in field. One-handed with players hanging all over him. Try and stop this running at you. No chance. Two from four for David Furman. Member of a very youthful second row combination that is doing the job for the green machine, and they look every bit of that tonight, don't they? From what uh, some call the T bar, he's hit it beautifully. That ball talks to him. <laughs> 22 to 2, 22 to 2. Where's Richie? 47th minute of the game. Back at the football. The Gould Sterling just continues. Canberra, they continue with Canterbury. 22 to 2. And Lomax, 25 out from his own line. If that man would have a ball with this scoreline, Clyde now. Is a fortnight from coming back. Paul Vorton. Pongia gives it away. That's Mullins. He's a sort of a string bean, if you like. Brett Mullins. Walters is not. And there chiming in is David Ferner. Uh -oh. Ferner turns something out of nothing. Goes away from Wilson. Oh, great run by David Ferner. Walters now hears the call. Stewart goes across looking for runners. Meninga comes in, so does Hetherington, and Ricky gets the try. His second of the night. That is beautiful rugby league. Yes, on the last tackle, Ricky Stewart knew that the numbers were out right. But just have a look at the way he drifts across, making sure the Canterbury defence cannot reform. Great work from Steve Wilders there, using Darren Britt as a shepherd. Britt was offside, so he couldn't come up with the tackle. David Ferner. Milly did it all himself. In fact, if Scott Wilson hadn't have come up with a desperation tackle right at the death there, Ferner scores the best try we've seen all year. Look at the, the defence for Canterbury, all caught out. Stewart comes across as we freeze play there. He's run across to make sure that these players here are committed. If he'd have thrown the football wide straight away, they could have drifted. But by going across as play continues, he's kept them in close. And that meant it was always going to be on out wide. Hetherington, another beautiful pass, short pass. He was involved in Ricky's first half try. His back row from Canberra. The whole pack, they can all use the football. The green machine. What do you say? Ruben Ricky gets his second. Go in with David Ferner with this conversion attempt from the other junction of the 20 metre line with the touch line. Success from the other side. Oh, I think he's got it. No, it's gone away. So no addition to a try scored by Ruben Wickey, made by that young man, David Furner. 50 minutes gone, and this is another angle on it. Yeah, great work from Stewart and, and Meninga, and especially Hetherington. He was under all sorts of pressure. 
Ruben Wicky, probably the, the lowest profile player in their all-star back line. But gee, doesn't he enjoy playing outside the talent that opens up those kind of holes for him, makes it very easy. Another forward in the back line there again, Hetherington with the quick catch and pass, as you say, they've done that uh, all night, the Canberra players. Great talent in their forward pack. In the old days, you didn't want your forwards in the back line. I can remember Warren Ryan saying it was like having trombones in the violin section, but uh, they're playing like violins tonight, the Raiders. Let's go to the sideline, Steve Roach. Yeah, super game from Brett Heverington. Uh, he didn't train yesterday because of the flu. He's been replaced by David Wesley. Watch this bloke go. How strong is he? Wesley on. And Heverington off then. As Ferner disentangles himself from the tacklers, and Stewart keeps it end on end and over the sideline, down about 18 metres out from the Kennedy line. Ricky Stewart, Rothmans and Dallier medalists last year. I think it's the best game we've seen David Ferner play as well. He's been in good form. But also the goal kicking. I've always thought that maybe that was a little bit of a weakness in the Canberra side. Maybe Ferner not right up there with the sharpshooters of the competition. But in the last two weeks, he kicked eight from eight last week. And he's hit the post twice tonight. So even though he hasn't got a, a perfect record, he hasn't been far away. Jerry Lamb trying to make something for them, but the ball has gone to ground. A frustrating night for Canterbury and for their captain. But uh, whilst it's been frustrating for them, you've got to sit back and marvel. If you follow them, enjoy what uh, this Canberra side has done tonight. Nine handling errors to five. And here they come again. Meninga the first. 28 metres out from the line, a three-man Canterbury tackle. Holding Meninga down for a longer period of time. And Croker does the, the showing of the football. Turns around the corner, look forward to me, and it was to McCallum. That's the second time from scrum wins that Canberra have hit one in and gone back to the blind side with set plays. As I said earlier in the night, they're not normally a side to do this, but now getting the opportunity to practice a few things that they're probably going to take into the semi-final series. Not that they'll take these exact plays, but they'll have certain variations of them, and it's a good time to practice them in the 26-2 in front on the scoreboard against quality opposition. Played by Jason Williams. And that is Simon Gillies. Interesting tactic there by Campbell off the scrum base. When they haven't got the feed, Ricky Stewart, the halfback who would normally stand at the scrum base, stands well back on the 10-metre line, and the first player off the scrum base, the 5'8", stands well within the 10 metres getting the first man who comes around. That'll be interesting to see how referees interpret that when they watch the video this week. Just starting to wonder about Dean Pay's inclusion at all. He's in got this. to be injured, Ray. Well, that will, we, that's obvious, but, you know, I'm wondering why he was probably on the bench at all. <laughs> 40 metres out from the Canberra line. Hetherington has played a larger part of the game than Ben Gillies. Ben took a heavy knock early on. He came back for a little while, late in the first half, but he's not back with us anymore, it seems. As Darren Smith gets a perfect pass. He's got support outside. That support will score. Jason Williams scores. Canterbury strike back. They do it with a very nice back line move here. Well orchestrated. They send through some decoy runners. The second man passed, but really it was the fact that Darren Smith was able to get outside Mal Meninga that scores the try. You can see there that the Canberra defence had to stop to see where the pass was going, and that allowed Darren Smith, with a touch more speed than his opponent, to set Jason Williams up on the outside. Stewart looking for the ankle tap. Full of I did very well to come from this blind side wing to make the kick that much harder. But when you can stop a defence and get on their outside, you've got problems. And Darren Smith showed a good turn of speed and a good pass to set up his outside man. Nice confidence builder for Canterbury. This game might be beyond doubt now, but that's something they can live for come semi-final time. And just a reminder of the Raiders, they're not the only ones who can put tries in their back line. Nice set play. Eighth try of the year for Jason Williams, another of the very much informed players. Halligan. 
Hasn't had a great deal of goal kicking practice tonight. 22 out, about nine in, and here it comes and getting away. Darrell Halligan misses, and 26 to 6 is the score. Friday night league from Bruce Stadium in the national capital. Canberra then. They start for us at the 56th minute and Jim Dimmick comes off his own line with a good run of about 18 metres. Darren Brett didn't take the line on that time. He ran to it before passing. He normally gets himself in traffic and tries to get a pass away, but that time was just a... A variation of Darren Britt taking it forward. Mark Brokenshire. The ball back with uh, Jason Smith. He gets it out the back for Hetherington. Hetherington, he loses the ball, but it's been raked out. So it's a penalty to Canterbury. Yeah, Ricky Stewart there, the man responsible with the left hand, raking the ball out. Good work there, Jason Smith getting involved. I suppose that has shown the, the quality of the Canberra defence. Jason Smith has been very quiet tonight. Canterbury. A try just a couple of minutes back. Can they get across that line again? Polamata for Brett and then for Dimmick. Dimmick gets it away, but it's been taken by a Canberra player. Steve Welders, is it? Yeah. It's a freak, isn't it? How, how would he have got there? The Stewart takes out from dummy half. Again, a good little set move on the fringe of the ruck there. Good short ball through Stewart. Good tackle from Mullins. And the hooker coming back as a second line. Let's just have a look here where Ricky Stewart. There you see him walking out of shot over near Nandruku. That's where the halfback is. And you can see there they had one Canberra player standing up within the 10 metres, as Phil Gould was pointing out. Meninga's right in his face, isn't he? Yeah. I think they'll have to get a ruling on that. I, I, I can't see where that's legal. Well, well, maybe it is. It's certainly a, a, a posing question for the referees during the week. Well, it's different, isn't it? What they're saying is that the man on the left side of the, the scrum is taking up the onside position that Ricky Stewart would have if he was at the scrum base. Exactly. That being the case, Bradley Clyde would, would immediately drop to the blind side uh, when the scrum was lost to take up Ricky's position at the scrum base. And they certainly closed down any scrum base move from the opposition. Interesting ploy. Again, the Raiders being innovative. Halligan flirting with that sideline, but I guess it's a time that you're entitled to flirt with danger. And this is Mullins now, just outside the 20-metre line. Ruben Ricky. Reaching the 30 metre line, that's what's in front of Canberra. Three matches remaining away to Willawarra, home to the Magpies, and away to Manly. And what a match that's going to be. Interesting period for Brett Mullins in his career, too. I mean, been getting a lot of raps lately, scoring a lot of tries, a, a dynamic performance last week, albeit some poor chase from Newcastle on various occasions, presented opportunities. But he's certainly going to be very closely marked over the coming weeks by some very talented teams. And uh, it's going to be a test of his. Uh, I mean, his attitude and his aptitude uh, to put that behind him and keep just working away, waiting for the breaks to come. Clyde trying to break through, does so, shrugs off another tackle and reaches almost the 20 metre line. Canberra now brewing up to what appears another try with Stewart turning it inside. Ferner is on the end of a solid tackle from Jason Smith. Walters, Stewart flicks it out the back for Lomax. Lomax has Polamata around his ankles, raked off the ground and again by Walters, back for Mullins. And the Canterbury player Simon Gillies has been injured in the tackle, leaving no marker which Mullins capitalises on and he takes it within 12 metres of the line. Walters scurries into dummy half. Mullins had a Canterbury player at marker interfering with the play of the ball but McCallum lets play go on and Canterbury 
Saved the day, but it's a line dropper. I tend to think if Canberra had to use the football, they, they scored the try. They created the overlap. A little kick will do. Let's just have a look. I think it's David Ferner out wide here that creates. I think if the short pass is thrown there to Ferner, he's on to Wiki and there's an overlap straight away. Points maybe not really their priority at the moment. Stopping points more important for them, and they do get the ball back. Simon Gillies moving the field. And Darren Brook has also come from the field. Canterbury with uh, some changes in the team at this uh, fairly late stage in the game. The ball to be played by Wesley just outside the 20 metre line. Six more tackles, struck four in the play. The ball, Lomax gets it out and Clyde tries to get it away. Eventually Boyle scoops it up off the ground, gets to the 20 metre line and he's pulled down. Gillies hasn't left the field, Ray's getting back in the defensive line now. OK, Walters comes away, running to the left of the field, the open side, Clyde is with it. There's the pass, bouncing twice out wide for Croker. And Croker is put down by Terry Lamb. Getting an assist from one of his teammates, they're 20 metres out from the Canterbury line. Meninga a dummy half, Ferner, a busy game by David Ferner, picked up and driven into the ground, and McCallum doesn't like the tackle. Ferner's... I think he's okay. Watch it, was there lifting in the tackle? It wasn't lifting in that groin area. Like uh, we've come to understand is taboo. But there was certainly a suggestion that the tackle was dangerous as Canberra take the tap. Walters 12 metres away from the line, right in the centre of the ground. And now Stewart from the right works the left. Clyde taken by Jason Smith Simon Gillies uh, Jason Hetherington coming over the top Walters away for Stewart he holds it back and fires it wide Mandruku Noah he's put down Kraken the chief tackler Meninga using David Boyle and Boyle almost over the line he's only a metre short Canberra with a mile of numbers out on this side, the left of the ground. Stewart picks up a second man play. And Croker it is that's put away. The last tackle. And it's with Stewart to go to the air again. Canterbury going back. Canberra coming forward. Ricky puts it down. Is that his third try? Ricky gets it down. And the try is given by Greg McCallum. 30 points to six after 69 minutes. And everything going right here for Canberra. I think he's got to almost give half the try to fool the boys at the man that climbs up, gets control of it. No, in fact, it's Bradley Clyde who gets the last touch and Ruby Ricky there. No doubt that there was no knock on. Play on, just good chase, good pressure from the outside men in Clyde and fool boy. They climb high over the top of Halligan. There's Ricky on hand, as he has been all night, to get another four-pointer. And it does seem that they're going to be in at least one encounter on neutral turf during the month of September as the kick is uh, perfectly accurate. David Ferner capping a, a tremendous game. Ten minutes to go. This was the try. This was the end of it. Fool of I made it possible. Clyde got a little hand in there, but... Ruben Wickey just fell over the line and said, thank you, that is my third try. Halfway line, Stewart running to the right and stopping and jinking and coming back with a pass for Bradley Clyde. Swarm of Canterbury defensemen over him. But far too often, they've dropped off in defence, Canterbury. Stewart now, he's having an absolute picnic out there. He's like, a, like an orchestra conductor. Thank God he doesn't look like Jeff Harvey. But there's Stewart keeping it low now. And Canterbury are back to field it. And now Williams is up to the halfway line. Support on his outside. Scotty Wilson tackled. And now Nandruku tries to pull him over the sideline. Polamanda. A long pass out for Simon Gillies. Dimmick. Lamb. Darren Smith. Darren striding out. The ball knocked down by Canberra. Into the clutches of Brett Mullins. And Brett is over the sideline, so Canterbury will get the feed here. Well, if Darren Smith could have looked inside, he had an unmarked Terry Lamb. 
I know whether Terry was calling for the football, but you'll see Lamb on the inside. It's good work getting the ball across wide enough to catch out the Canberra defence here. Darren Smith, look at the inside there. Terry Lamb, nobody there at all apart from the number six. Trying to get the pass on the outside. The ball was knocked down. Over the trial, side now. One of the most impressive parts about Canberra tonight is their recovery and defence. Whenever Canterbury have come up with a half break, they've immediately got back in position well before the ball's played on the next play and got their defence in order. They're going to need all of that at September. Williams. 25 out from the Canberra line. Across for Polo Mountain. Then Lamb. Demick is with it. And it pulled down by Reuben Wickey. Bradley Clyde has not stopped working all night. But then again, we've come to expect that happened where really. Bradley Clyde. That pass looked to shade forward. Play went on. And Canberra come up with the ball as Martin Bell is unable to catch it. Clyde now catches both markers going the same way. Palmetto and Bella both running to the right and Clyde with a step off his left foot was able to pinch 10 metres and now Quentin Pongia. 35 out from the Canberra line. Stewart. Keeping them guessing. On that occasion he was keeping his own men guessing but uh, Meninga did well. Walters. the only blemish that one could find on the Steve Walters game that's the turnover 10 meters into Canberra's area for the Bulldogs Simon Gillies right back by Walters he was able to make up for his his error pretty quickly Mandruku Mandruku with some evasive work almost at the halfway line Jason Deeth is out there now. Stewart pulled down by Polo Mounter. Wesley. Steve Walters, where is he playing now? The ball knocked down by Quentin Pongia and Canterbury get the advantage. Bella on the blind side. Clark. Showing only two and a half minutes remaining. We had uh, we had a football match for about 20 minutes, but then Canberra ran away in the second 20-minute segment of the game. And they've gone on with a comprehensive victory coming up for the Raiders. Of course, now Ray gives North Sydney a chance. A giant step towards the minor premiership with their game on Sunday, an important clash at Penrith Stadium. Uh, with probably the easier draw leading up to the semi finals. Well, I've honestly believed, I know Peter Sterling does, that being minor premiers is a huge. Of course, now Ray gives North Sydney a chance. A giant step towards the minor premiership with their game on Sunday, an important clash at Penrith Stadium. Uh, with probably the easier draw leading up to the semi finals. Well, I've honestly believed, I know Peter Sterling does, that being minor premiers is a huge advantage at that time of year. And uh, North Sydney won't want that one to slip by on Sunday. Panthers will be stiff opposition. And the other thing that uh, is interesting to note, that North have beaten both these sides. In fact, both times that these sides have beaten last, I think Canterbury have won, unlocked one five in a row. Canberra four. But before that, it was North Sydney team that inflicted the defeat. So their form looks very good right end of the season a lot of people trying to forecast who will play the grand final this year we've got a minute and a quarter Phil your choice your thoughts well I've, I've said that I think North Sydney are playing this year's grand final I think they've been a form team all season they had a little lapse in the middle of the year during representative time but they've put seven wins on the trot and now another run of, of successes. And they're going to be minor premiers by virtue of their draw. Uh, that is a huge advantage. They're only going to have to win one game to get there. How can you deny Canberra on what you've seen tonight? If they can force their way into the top three, they get an opportunity to do that when playing Manly in the last game of the year. The Canberra North Grand Final. And North Sydney, in their only meeting this year, scored a very convincing 30, I think 30 to 10 win or 30 to 12 win. Bella does well, turns it back around the corner of the pass, then thrown a speculator. Croker gets it back, and Meninga is up and trying to 
keep it alive, but he's tackled on the halfway line. Sterlo, which ones do you think will be there? I'll wait until the top three to sign. Thanks, Ray. Okay, thank you. Clyde. Ricky tries to split through. The ball goes loose. Picked up by Pongia. And he slammed away over the top by Brokenshire. I didn't know to do that. I'd like to change more until I'll wait for the top three team. Okay. Stewart's kick fielded by Mullins. Mullins brushes away from one and turns it back. And a Fulalbai. Fulalbai gets his second. Right on the full time siren. Canberra extend their lead. 36 to 6. Well, that just puts the icing on the cake, doesn't it? Beautiful little kick once again. We've seen it's at the third try from kicks tonight. Again, it was a planned move for Brett Mullins. What about the ease that he beat Scott Wilson in catching the football? And then Fulabai, who again has done a good job tonight on hand to score. But it's the ability of the kick to find space and to find the man that it is intended for. An ordinary attempt there from Stephen Hughes. To learn from that. And here he is from almost in front, and he misses. So there it is, full time from Bruce. 36 to 6 in favour of the home side Canberra, keeping their record intact at home since the first match of 1993. 20 wins in a row at home uh, for Canberra. 36 to 6. They don't come any more comprehensive than that.